Hi, I'm Sandy Babb and welcome to my studio. I've had some recent questions on what I do with the things that I find, whether they're nature finds, twigs, sticks, leaves, acorns, whatever, or even whether they're just rusty bits of metal or little washers or <laughs> different things that I might find out walking. So I thought I would um, show you a bit of my stash and um, I have some older pieces of artwork that that I kept that have some examples here so I thought we would just I could just show you some quick ideas and maybe you could get some ideas of what to do with things that you find when you're out on a walk so hang on and let's go look at the stash okay this is a little um, bin that I got um, for half price at Hobby Lobby and it holds a lot of the little bits and pieces um, I'll show you some of the finds. Now, obviously, some of these finds, you know, like this is mostly flea market stuff here. Um, some of this, like, I would pick this up if I found it. Little rusty washer. Um, this I did pick up. I don't even know what that is. Um, I found this number at a campsite. Sorry, I'm not good at holding the camera. I'm used to having it mounted, so it might be a little weird and shaky. I apologize. Um... I don't know what all kinds of bits and bobs. Here's a good one. This one has rusty cans. This was off of the front of an old stove. There's all kinds of rusty. That's off of a paintbrush. There's some kind of, I don't even know what that is. But this is kind of where I keep a lot of these little bits and bobs. I have wooden, wood pieces of wood in here. Um, metal, glass, miscellany. There's leather, there's, I even picked up things like this. This is a piece of a old dish, you know, um, that would be incorporated into a piece of jewelry. So there's that, but let's swing around here to my nature stash. Right here at my desk, I have a big drawer. And I have filled this drawer with all of my nature items. Ooh, sorry about the squeak. Let's see how far out it can I can get it with one hand. Okay, I don't want to pull it down any further than that because it'll fall. But this is the entire drawer. And I've used some of those old um, things that you would put little uh, miniatures in, little miniature things, and I cut them down to fit inside the drawer. And in here I have all kinds of fun goodness here are some rocks i mean isn't that cool just nature made there are little pieces of bark there are cocoons these are polyphemus cocoons um diane if you're watching i still have this ribbon i liked it too much to use it it's pretty and i just like looking at it um fossils there are wings feathers wasp nest there are cicada wings, there are butterfly wings, and before anybody says anything, or before PETA calls me, these all died naturally, okay? I did not go out and catch these, I don't pull the wings off of things. Um, I These are picked up in nature, exactly as nature left them. Um, see, there's a piece of a turtle shell. And so, these are cruelty-free items. There's even bone, which this, what I would do with something like this, is hollow this out. I would do this outdoors. I would be wearing a mask. I have a tool that will clean this out, clean this marrow out. I would um, tumble and polish it and probably slice it down and make this into beads. So, that's what something like that would be. There's an entire wish in there. Look at that. An unbroken wish. It's unused. There's some dried flowers, some moss and lichen, stones from the river, peacock feathers. Um, this is a daisy that dried that my husband ran out in the rain and picked for me out of a field and I've kept it. There's a rock in the shape of my state that I found. Um, all kinds of things. So this this often changes and grows and you know expands and contracts depending on what I'm doing with it. 
So those are kind of some of the things that I look for when I'm in nature. Now I want to show you some of the things that I do with them. Okay, now here are some of the things that have been sort of worked into something. And um, then I'll show you how I've used some of these pieces on actual pieces of art. So I'm going to go in a little bit and move this tray back so you can kind of see it. This is just an old piece of a rusty tin can lid. I've actually kind of hammered it. You can see it's got a little cup to it and drilled holes in it. Um, sketched some little trees on there and put a little dictionary word twig. This I would probably mount to a flat surface and I would actually have twigs coming out of this underneath curved part. So that's how I would use that on a mixed media piece, probably on a book um, cover or something like that. Um, this little piece is um, some sort of little mesh wire. I really don't know what it came from, but it was kind of shaped and fashioned, and so I made it into a little nest. And that can also be used on something. You can also use your natural finds to encase things in resin. Now these are old pieces and the reason I've never used these is because when I first started I didn't realize that there was a resin that turned yellow and a resin that didn't and this does. <laughs> so I never use these but there's a tiny leaf and a little pressed flower. There's a piece of bark and a leaf and I was hoping that this one would come out. It's got a little zebra moth wing and I was hoping that it would just layer in the front of here to use these in jewelry. Well, these were not good, but I just kept the examples because I never know, you know, there may be a time when I want this yellowish look and I may grab these back up, but these were not really good examples. They have a lot of bubbles in them and this, like I said, these were test run, first time tries. So, um, this was actually a pair of um, wings that I found, Polyphemus wings. They were quite, um, delicate but they were they were they were shaped well but they were really really faded they had been out in the sun for a long time so I um, treated them and glued them in layers and treated the top and then went back in with paint and repainted the polyphemus so this could be used and if you look very closely you can even see his little all the little veining in his wings so that's something I could use in my artwork in some way. Some things I just press and this has been encased in glass. You can see that there's some tiny little flowers and leaves, uh, a little fern frond and a tiny, tiny little blue jay feather. And this I would probably use in a mixed media book also, um, probably on a spine or a cover. This is another kind of example, the same sort of um, technique that I did here. This is a real leaf, and it has been um, dried, and the, the text that's coming through this leaf is actually from a dictionary page, but there is a real leaf under there, and oops, under the paint, um, and this is something now that I've gotten it to where it's so pliable, I could actually sew on it or do anything like that, and I could use that in my work. This was another pair of wings that I found. Um, twice a, a year, the Luna moths are here, and the birds eat their bodies. And the same thing with the Polyphemus. When they come out of their cocoons, the, the birds eat their bodies, and the wings just lie fallow on the ground. And so these I rescued and made a wire frame and um, encased them. And these could be added to a piece of artwork. And this one, I did put a little bit of a shimmery glitter on it. So they've got sort of a little, I was thinking fairy wings when I saw this. So those are just a few ways that you could, you know, do something like that. Another thing I might do is something simple, like on this piece of jewelry, is to just use a twig. I make sure that these are treated so that there's no bugs in them. I make sure that they're not um, brittle and um, I might use it in, you know, a way like that to, you know, attach something. Another way to use just the natural finds in the, on their own, this is just a little tag. It says specimen. 
There's all kinds of little things in here. There's bark, seeds, moss, um, pine twigs, a little snail shell from the woodlands, um, an acorn cap, a little um, hickory nut, a feather, all these things. And those were just put on as just a tag, you know, something very decorative. This was a piece of metal that I found, this round piece of metal, and I, it was just randomly laying on the side of the road, and I've had it for I don't know how long, and then one day I decided to try uh, playing with some weaving, and I wove it into a tree, and now this could be attached to one of my book pages or a book cover or something like that, so there's another example. Now this piece was inspired by Roxanne Evans Stout and her um, Wisdom Keepers class. I'm, I know I'm not saying that title right. Roxanne, I'm apologizing to you right now. Um, it'll come, the, the correct title will come to me in a minute. But this is a piece of art that you, that's very tactile that you can hold. And this was all found on a, a kayak trip that my husband and I did. And I found this washed up piece of wood and I just thought it was really pretty. I found this heavy piece of rusted iron and I found this old uh, coke can lid. And so all these things were combined with some weaving that I did and with some clay, a clay and metal adornments. And it just makes a beautiful piece of art that for me is just a memory of that trip with my husband. So that's another way to use things like that. I have used them to adorn books. This is a handmade journal that I did. Um, you can see it's got a fossil here on the spine. I've used a pressed leaf, a pressed flower, and even some bark, some really thin bark, a found stone, a twig, and a bone. This one, I need to finish sealing off all the marrow, and I want to fill that with resin in that space. And it's just an empty journal to sketch, write, or paint in. So that's a way to use this. Um, another thing that I've done is some things are just for inspiration. Like I've used actual leaves on this piece here at the top to um, eco dye fabric and create leaves for this piece. I have um, used a, a twig that I found out in nature and cast it so that this is metal and it's metal cast now to support and hold up my little pocket nest here. And you can see that just the, just the nature alone, sometimes things come back to the studio just for inspiration like mushrooms. I might pick up a mushroom or something, bring it back and sketch it and just pull the design elements, the coloring. Um, the shapes, the textures, and try to repeat those in paint. So some things are just, they're not physically used like that, but they may be used for inspiration. Like we have this weedy grass that grows here in the fall. And so these pieces here were inspired by that weedy grass, you know, um, that kind of thing. This fiber we, we live in the south and everything here is mildew and moss. And so this fiber was all inspired by looking at colors of mosses that were all kind of growing together. So sometimes things are just for inspiration. They're not actually used. Um, another thing that I've done is this was a find. Um, this was an old this used to work somehow this moved and this was a, a gas cap thing and I don't know if it was a tractor it was some kind of piece of equipment and so I've used this as the cover of my book and here's some more of that mesh um, that I had and that has turned into a nest so that has been you know put onto the cover of the book so that's a way I use finds um, this book is just about all uh, little inspiration finds. Some of these you might even recognize from some of my later uh, latest Facebook post. Um, we were at the lake and I found this twig and I thought it was so pretty. And I found this little piece of bone here. 
and this glass, um, light glass, river glass, whatever you want to call it, this kind of polished, and this little stone that had a hole in it. And so all of these uh, became a part of the cover of this little book that I've been working on. So that is how I would use something like that. And I'll show you a couple of examples inside this book. Um, this is actually painted with mud. Now it's sealed, so it's not going to come off or any, anything. Um, but this was actually painted with mud that I gathered on the bank, and I used a stick to do a little tree scene on that plaster. Um, this page, those are feathers that I found on a walk, and they are attached under mica. Sometimes I use the actual pressed plant. This is just glued in there. Sometimes the, the things I gather are for sketches. We used to call these helicopters. Loved playing with these as a kid. Um, here is, let me widen back out just a tad. Whoops, okay. Here are some butterfly wings. I found these at that same day on the lake, and I have enclosed these in acetate and mica, and they're going to be attached onto this page. I just hadn't, haven't really gotten around to doing that one yet. Um, more things. Um, now, I didn't collect a bird, but I did, you know, take a photo of a bird and then, you know, did a, a, what I call little quick sketches. I am by no means a sketch artist. That's not really my thing, but I do like to do sketches. So that's kind of, let me kind of flip through here real quick. There's one with the little um, honeybee and, uh, or a bumblebee rather, and clover. Another thing, just, you know, how you can use nature, you can just observe it and sketch it. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Another little wildflower sketch there. Um, let's see, a leaf, you know, a leaf that was hanging over a tree where I was sitting. Just a quick little sketching of that. Another, there was a blue jay up in the tree and he was just squawking like crazy. So I decided to put him in the book too and this little book gets worked on when we go camping I, I'll do one or two little things this is frond from a um, um, cypress tree dried frond more inspiration just for sketching in the oak leaf and I think now a dragonfly I did find a dead dragonfly and I did sketch it and then a little nest then I have some twigs somewhere that I collected that I wanted to tie in there and I haven't put those in there yet. But that's also another way to use things. It's just to apply them in any way that you see in any form. This is also another way I use found objects. This is, was a rusty ring. This was a rusty thing around a paintbrush. Old rusty nails. Weird little parts and pieces. Some old hinges um, that I found. A lot of just, um, you know, little things like that. This is actually a rusty um, can lid on that page. Um, this was another rusty ring that I found, and it had, it's the same ring. This is actually, I guess I found these at the same time. This is actually the very same ring if I turn it that way. You can see that it's been turned into something completely different. And here is a, that actually opens. Um, here's another rusty ring that I've turned into um, something of a wire weaving. Um, another rusty ring that I used to make a spider web. Another rusty ring. <laughs> Y'all are like, how many rusty rings did you pick up? Evidently a lot. But this one was kind of cool because it had this uh, little screw thing on it. And I found this spring and I stitched the spring to the page and then made this where it opens up. And then you can also see here that I have used twigs from nature to put in there. And then sometimes things are just inspired, like this little woven nest. It's just inspired by nature, but it's using regular craft supplies. And I think I put a lot of circles in this book. Um, here's another one of those um, wings that I've encased. Um, this is a cocoon and a twig and a rusty ring. So, you know, you get the whole 
whole package here, you know. Um, and this must have been a book of circles. I must have been really into circles at the time. Um, this is one that I did um, to represent the world, the globe. And it's also done in a ring. It lifts up where you can read it. And I think that's it on that. So those are some ways that when you collect things, you can look at them with a different eye, that they aren't just a leaf that fell off of a tree or a stone on the ground or, um, you know, a little rusty bit that came off your, you know, your green peas or something, you know, that's rusted. Um, these are just, you can look at these in different ways and see how you can use them. And the other thing I do with a lot of my rusty stuff is I have what I call my rusty bucket. It sits outside on a little bench outside my studio. And I use this to rust off fabric and so and paper. So these come in handy not just for elements in your art, but for making fabrics to do your art. So I hope that gives you some fun ideas, and thank you for joining me.